hey, this question is for who anybody that wants to answer it. My Detroit Pistons. What the fuck do we do to get good again? I love Stan Van, but it 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 ain't working, man. Well, it, it's just I mean, look, I mean, I, I'm I'm a, a little bit pessimistic anyway. Anybody else? That was officially the most professional introduction we've ever had. So, all right. So we got some. Uh, you know, we're on a uh, game eighty-one for some teams, and some teams are waiting for game eighty-two. Um, so, some teams are going one, two, three, Cancun, and some are fighting for their lives. Did you write this out? I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I did not. It sounds like Stu God's reading an ad right now. <laughs> Yeah, no, nah, I, I wish I, I wish I honestly uh, cared that much about the NBA like that. Um, but can we start with uh, Ben Simmons and his uh, zero competition, and he would choose himself as Rookie of the Year, 100. percent Do we really expect people to give nuance? Like players, every time they're asked, "Oh, are you the MVP?" They're going to say, "Yeah, I'm the MVP, no competition." Like, what? Why do people expect <laughs> it to be any different for Rookie of the Year? Like, you think Ben Simmons is going out there with a nuanced opinion on, "Oh, I, you know what? I, I think I could have an advantage in this matchup." But you know what? The guy across from me is a really good defender. No, it, that's the confidence these athletes have. Ben Simmons has been phenomenal this year. I, I, I don't know why they expect him to build up somebody else. Yeah, I think I think more so a lot of people now. It's kind of been a not a East versus West, but pretty much tug of war, you know, because both of both players, Donovan Mitchell and Ben Simmons have both been playing great for their teams, but now they're comparing right. like, oh, he has Embiid, and everybody's like, he has an All Star on his team, and they're like, well, he has All Star on his team, and Rudy Gobert, <laughs> and they're like, oh yeah, well, Donovan's doing this, you know what I mean? And it's kind of like they're trying to nitpick each other's game. So, do you think the race is close enough? Anyone on this panel is close enough to be a co MVP? Of course it's close enough. Of course it is. You got a dude who's actually, like, carrying the scoring load for his team. Like, Ben Simmons, his job isn't actually to score. I mean, it's kind of to generate offense, but even that, not really. Their their bread and butter offensively is working through Embiid. So he kind of gets to do what he wants, right? Um, what what? And that's not to, you know... Uh, minimize the, the guy's contribution to the Sixers this year. But what Donovan Mitchell is doing is basically being the, the freaking go-to guy for his team while being a rookie. You know what I'm saying? Like this is, and it, and he's doing it pretty efficiently, especially again, for somebody who's in their first year in the league, um, both of them play pretty good defense, man, which is always surprising for a first year player. Uh, I don't think it's some kind of fucking landslide or walk. But what I do like about what Ben Simmons is doing and how he's acting is that, you know, he's talking like, look, none of these people, none of these dudes could fuck with me. But on the court, he's actually an unselfish guy and wants right. to get his teammates involved, which is the opposite of certain guys that, you know, we tend to see in the NBA who, yo, I'm the man, all this bravado, all this shit. And then, you know, they jack up 12 terrible shots in a row. That's I like that Ben Simmons is a a pass first, get his guys involved type of player. And he can do that with the confidence that like the people, every dude that's in front of me, I'm going to kick his ass. So I'm into that duality, if you will. Let me, I, let me ask a question about Ben Simmons. Do we think that his passing is an unselfish thing? Are we convinced of that? I'm not like a, like a is, Rondo like Russ type of passer. I think, I think, well, I don't, oh, Russ, Russ, Russ Rondo. Like those guys are getting, those guys get, are passing to get assists, right? Like, there, there's a difference between being an unselfish guy and passing to get assists. You think that's what Ben Simmons does? I don't know. I, I, don't, like, I, I think times, he passes because he can't shoot. 
Yeah, and maybe I, that's, that's what, what it I, is. I thought, okay, I thought that's what I think. Okay, so I thought that. So what Trey just said is, I thought that's what you were getting at. Like he's passing because he can't do shit else. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> Which he can I do guess the basketball is whatever he wants. He can dominate the basketball okay. player, but I'm saying well, not complete. Well, I'm just saying not. He doesn't have a jumper, but I'm saying like as far as the other intangibles, like he has a high IQ and he knows how to play the game. Um, yeah, he's super smart. But in general, if he couldn't make a jump shot, I think. The people would get less pat, like less. Uh, he would have less assists, I think. Right. Well, they would use him differently. Like, yeah, they would based definitely... on his skill set, that's his role in the offense. Like, I don't know if he's necessarily assist hunting. Like, I, I do see him get aggressive, but he he has an awareness of what's available to him. And and when teams kind of wall off the paint and, and he's not able to get inside, that's when you you see him um, move the ball more. And, and to his credit, like that's what he should be doing. I, I don't think it's necessarily a Rondo thing, but you they're going to design the offense around your skill set. So I, I think that's why he ends up getting more assists. Is he still 0 for, for the season right now? I know the last that we checked was uh, 0 for 11 for three-point attempts. I think that's something he's just going to have to carry into his shit gradually because right now he's basically like a young Jason Kidd, right, um, who just completely just ignores the idea that he should take long-range jumpers. Right. Uh, I don't, you know, Jason Kidd became competent at threes towards the end of his career, but for the most part, he wasn't making shit. <laughs> you know, and that's throughout his New Jersey years, Phoenix years. Like he was just a guy that, you know, but but at the same time, he always had the ball in his hands. You know, um, how is is, is this going to be Ben Simmons' role for the rest of his life on the Sixers? Like, what are they going to do with this Fultz kid? He's going to become some kind of Reggie Miller off ball player with a broken chicken wing <laughs> jump shot. I don't I have, like. I don't understand. Have no idea. But this also. Um... Not to not to segue from uh, folks, but this also reminds me of 2003. Uh, Donovan Mitchell is the first rookie since Carmelo Anthony to lead his team in scoring going into the playoffs. Um, not to compare Ben Simmons to LeBron that much, um, but I think it's going to be great for the league for Ben Simmons to really light a spark under these other guys' ass when they look down the line, year four, year six, year eight, and remember the shit that he's talking. So I hope that you know, his game elevates even more than what we're seeing. And he just doesn't peak. And it's just like, okay, well, we, we, we locked you down. You can't get to the hole anymore. You know, cause I mean, I, does he, how old is he now? 19, 20? Or is he, is he he's 21? 21? Oh, he's 21. 20. Damn. He, old, oh yeah. He's two years out. I'm like, damn, you old the shit that just have been leaving freshman year. But I forgot that he didn't <laughs> play last year. Do any of you guys see, uh, Simmons having an advantage over any other rookie since he had the the um the red shirt year. Definitely, of course. I, I mean, it's the same thing as what happened with Blake Griffin. Like, if you have a year with NBA trainers and and being in the film rooms and stuff like that, it, it's going to help your understanding of the game. You're going to see it a little slower than you would if you were a true rookie. Right. But I mean, that hasn't been held against players in the past, so I don't see why it would be now. Um, I don't really have a strong rookie of the year take. I, I think either of these guys can get it depending yeah, on what I you agree. value. Right. My my th- something that I've been discussing with people lately. Do you think there we would see more uh, diverse voting on these awards if the names weren't made public? Like I feel now, everyone feels like you have to come to a consensus uh, on these award voting, and it, I, it'd be interesting to see that if it was back to when. Uh, the the voters weren't made public. If you'd see kind of more diverse opinions on this, I don't know that that affects That's it. I mean, I think I think everybody talks it out, but people usually have. I don't think too many people are convinced to like change their opinion based on you know reading from somebody else. I think right, but I be think you see like less. You see less like Homer picks, like when Melo got the the vote that disrupted LeBron getting uh, the unanimous MVP and then uh, kind of the backlash from that. I I feel like that's kind of changed how people approach it. Well, then it's making Uh, people think harder and come up with more, you know, uh, more acceptable results than just like blind bias. Also, if you're if you're somebody who, you know, is outraged by the idea that Donovan Mitchell could get voted for, you're either really stupid or you're a fan, which generally is the same thing. So, you know, (laughs) 
fuck these people. You know what I'm saying? Like, how could you? No, like, sure. I, I, get, I, I see what you're saying. Like, some a voter might be like, look, I don't feel like dealing with the guff of how could you not? But it's not that clear cut. And anybody who feels that way is an idiot. So, yeah, I would hope that. Yeah, voters I'm talking more awards in general, not necessarily rookie of the year. Account. I see. I I was thinking that, but like the rust thing last year makes me think that people are willing to think. I guess, quote unquote, outside the box. Even if you want to say the triple mm-hmm. double thing, um, isn't outside the box. I'm one of those people who think like the the more um, analytical based stats that that Russell crude last year actually bolstered his his candidacy. So I had no problem with him winning. Um, the MVP, I think in past years, people would have been like, look, man, you won fucking 35 games or whatever the fuck the Thunder won last year. You ain't getting this award no matter what, you know. So <laughs> I, I'm not too worried about awards voters um, getting scared into voting conventionally. Would you guys be cool with a uh, co-rookie of the year, which we haven't had since 2000? Yeah, I'd yes. be fine with it. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. I love that idea. What's wrong with that? I hate when people are like, oh, sharing trophies is bullshit. Like, what's, I mean, sometimes there's two deserving candidates. Yeah, 99 <laughs> 2000 was Steve Francis and Elton Brand, which even in retrospect seems like it was probably pretty even. And then 94 did, 95 did Mike was. Mike Miller have to share. Oh, Mike Miller didn't have to share his rookie of the year. There was just no, no he, good. He got it all to himself. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. But that's all. But that's also not like a decision that gets made. That's just how the math adds up. Yeah, right? that's just how it kind of happens, right? Right. Yeah, yeah and then ninety four, ninety five was Jason Kidd, Grant Hill, co rookies of the year. That was deserving. That was a good one, though. Um, it's just a shame that uh, Ben Simmons couldn't play last year, and then he would have, you know, gotten it over Brogdon like by a mile. Yeah, and then this so year would have been pity. Donovan. I'm so on the pity, on the pity Royce. I don't like pity Royce. I mean, I thought Brogdon had a a good yeah, year. He had a Brogdon. solid year. I still, it, it, I still think it should have been Embiid. Thirty-one games, give it to Embiid. He was the best rookie. Yeah. So it was a surprising yeah. uh, award. Like, hey, let's reward these guys for hard work and you know, blue collar. I'm out on that. I was like, okay, you know, whatever. I didn't see any other rookies doing it, but. If you're going to eliminate Embiid because of the in- injury, then, you know, because it was clearly Embiid was just killing. He was killing, like, all all NBA guys. And I'm like, yo, you got to give it to him. But they didn't want to tank the award. I understand. And, but now you got Malcolm Brogdon walking around like he's God's gift to Milwaukee or something, which, I mean, I'm happy that he's back on the floor. But is he just MCW 2.0? Yeah, I mean, looking at the list of the rookies from the last, like, 20 MCW? years, it's nah, Brogdon, man. it's Carter Williams, and it's Mike Miller that kind of stick out, and you're like, these guys don't fit with the rest of the guys. No, Brogdon can actually play basketball. MCW. But that's not. what I'm saying. He's Brogdon, an NBA like, player. Play. Like, he's not, he's not a guy you'll look back and be like, yo, he, yeah, he was. He's not going to rack up seven, <laughs> eight, nine. He's also, but he's also 26 years old. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> I mean that's fair. That but fair. Like, he's on tail. Oh yeah, he's gonna retire in two years, but he's still gonna play. <laughs> yeah. Yo, that's crazy. Well, yeah, so, he's the president, right? So he can only serve four yeah. terms in the NBA. That's four years, crazy. right? He's gonna retire in two years. So he's a uh, who's my man? That was a thirty. Oh, Pablo Prigioni, thirty-five year old rookie. <laughs> that was OD. Yeah, man. Shouts to Pablo Prigioni. Hey, Jade, this is Wes. Shout out to the B2B promo code for SeedGeek. I just bought tickets to Buck, a Bucks playoffs game. There's a lot riding on this game 82 because if they win, I get to see playoff LeBron, which I feel like is a once in a lifetime experience. Pray for our Bucks there, Zach, and keep it real. Thanks, guys. Buying tickets to sports and concerts can be complicated and confusing, but there is a better way to buy with SeatGeek. SeatGeek is the smartest, easiest way to get tickets to every type of live event. Whether you are searching for a last-minute deal, planning a night out, or need to find the perfect gift, SeatGeek helps you find the best seats at the best prices fully guaranteed. There is nothing quite like seeing your favorite team or musician in person, and SeatGeek will help you get closer to the action for a great value. 
I have the SeatGeek app on my phone. And it is by far the easiest way I've found to shop for tickets that could be anywhere. And with just a few taps can instantly find seats. I actually just used the SeatGeek app to buy tickets to uh, The Wizard of Oz. It was in uh, Hartford a couple days ago and we really enjoyed it. Sadie loved it. Uh, I'm also looking for uh, U2 tickets. Um, right now they're a little bit too expensive, but I put my email in. And uh, once they come down to a certain price, uh, the SeatGeek app will ping me. Uh, SeatGeek is designed to make your ticket buying experience easier than ever. Saves you time and money by searching multiple ticket sites to compare prices and find amazing deals. And to get you the most bang for your buck, SeatGeek grades every ticket based on value to help you immediately identify the best seats that fit your budget. Plus, every purchase fully guaranteed. Make it your go-to app for finding the best deals on every type of ticket from sports and concerts to comedy and theater. Best of all, back-to-back listeners get $20 off their first SeatGeek purchase. Just download the SeatGeek app and enter the promo code B2B. That is B, the number two, and B for $20 off your first SeatGeek purchase. Um, the Pelicans clinched yesterday, right? Am I right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, uh, everybody's in in the West except for uh, the the Timberwolves and Nuggets game tomorrow night. A lot of stress for my man Zach Harper. Wait, uh, so the Timberwolves the Timberwolves lost last night? No, they won. No, they oh, won, oh, but it, uh, oh, they're yeah, tied I'm with like, the Nuggets. I I'm like they won by like sixteen. Yeah, but it's um, like a it's like a weird tie over there. And they Tim play each other. Really so. so they're going to have a team game. Is that going to be on TV? Like, I mean, like, uh, national? They should make it. They One should. I think. mean, if they... I don't, they I don't okay. think it's a national wanna, game. I, I want to ask Zach, though. We know that they missed the playoffs yeah. basically yeah. because Jimmy Butler... Yeah. Well, the... Hold on. Hold on. Wait. Zach, Zach is breaking up. He's still getting It's that. currently not scheduled to be on TV. Still... Um, they better fix that. They have to upgrade that. Zach's, Zach, try again? Zach's in the desert right now. <laughs> I think he's faking it because he doesn't want to talk I, about the I actually Google. just drove by Maze. I is. just drove by Maze. <laughs> he's still there. <laughs> he's still out in the desert. You found my shelter out there? Uh, I don't know. Like, I, don't, I don't really know what to think about it. Like, it's like they're, they're either going to make it or they're not. Like, I'm not stressed about it. I'm still going to have to pay my rent. I just think the perception of the team of, like, was this an improvement upon last year? Like, if you take the Jimmy Butler, and that's the thing, you can't take Jimmy Butler out of the equation because his presence literally minimized the dude they just maxed out. So, I don't know how you judge this, Wiggins. Loss. That's yeah. I don't know. I mean, if they Jimmy Butler feet. doesn't get hurt and they win fifty three games, like, is it a fail? I, I don't know. I don't no, know. It's underachieving though because. I mean, for Tibbs to go all in, am I right, Zach? I feel like they loaded so much up to get these guys to build. Like, okay, first of all, we're going to break this this whole playoff curse, and then now we're going to be loading these guys up with some, you know, not even ringers, but some vets. And then now only to to get a play in? I mean, I, I know, like, even if Jimmy wasn't, if Jimmy didn't get hurt, right, what did they finish, seventh or sixth? No, they'd I be still, higher. They were, I mean, they, 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 they were fourth when Jimmy got hurt. I still see and them as a first fourth, but, but now I'm saying I still see them as a first hurt. round exit. I don't know that that was uh, that. actually uh, a freaking given, man. Not only were they fourth, they were climbing, meaning that they had. Um, kind of designed the identity of the team is like, you know what, Jimmy's our best fucking player, and we're gonna act like that. Um, yeah, it looked like and, they were and figuring it out. Kind of Right, and everybody had kind of started falling in line, even to the detriment of Wiggins, who, like, I don't know, I'm just fascinated by Wiggins because I'm still somebody who thinks he's capable of a lot more, and I can understand why he feels like his wins are He's a, he's a lot better than the conversation is. The tough thing about this, like, the fact that only one of these teams is going to get in is it feels like both of these teams would be a lot higher if it wasn't for injuries. Like, even looking at the standings now, like, there's basically a yeah. game that separates ninth from fourth, and both like Denver and Minnesota were like in that four or five range before they, they got hurt and, and by a decent margin. Like you had Millsap that missed like half the year, Gary Harris has missed twenty games, Jokic missed some time, Jamal Murray has missed some time and been banged up. 
And then you got Jimmy Butler from Minnesota, which that's that's a thinner team, and and he's the clear leader on that team. So um, it, it just sucks that only one of these teams is going to make it in. Yeah, and we have to sit through New Orleans. Oh God, he's crazy. Right, like yeah, New Orleans would be fun if Boogie <laughs> was there, but. I, I, yeah, as much yeah, as but, I love AD and I got respect for Drew Holiday, I don't want to watch that. We're not here for Etwan more. No, <laughs> we're not. We're here. I want Etwan left. <laughs> <laughs> Get off of Zach Harper's wow. corner. <laughs> wow. <laughs> The only person who's been out in front of this, Jade, it's, you know, it's very telling the character of the people who hit me up. <laughs> and on that note, uh, are we shocked about more more shocking fact? Uh, Ricky Rubio's first playoff or Melo's five year drought? <laughs> uh, it's gotta well, be I mean, Rubio, yeah. right? Melo was on the Knicks, a team that has been completely terrible, dysfunctional, trash, awful since pretty much the year two thousand and one. Consistently, like them missing the playoffs five years in a row, is kind of in line with who that franchise is. Ricky Rubio just straight up not making the playoffs for 10 years <laughs> is kind of ridiculous. If Rubio makes it and the Timberwolves <laughs> don't, that's kind of a story, I think. Because then they kind of, the the Jazz really like plucked Rubio from from that situation. And, and I still think that he Rubio would have, you know, necessar- wouldn't necessarily have been worse than Jeff Teague. So that's kind of a feel good story if he if that happens Teague signing is always a weird one that was always a strange signing they just wanted drew holiday and couldn't couldn't get it so they settled for jeff teague i still think teague fits better in minnesota and whether it be teague or rubio it wouldn't have changed anything it like the jimmy butler thing is the only reason that they're not making playoffs but the thing about jeff teague is is like (laughs) I feel like Rubio is closer to, a, I guess, a George Hill type in the sense that, like, I don't know. He just feels like a, a piece that could just kind of fit in. Jeff Teague just seems like a guy that's like, yo, I actually need to be participating in this shit to <laughs> to be happy and work. Yeah, <laughs> you I mean, know, Jeff, I don't Jeff know. Teague maybe still thinks maybe he's that's a just a general... Right. That maybe it's just a general lack of respect that I have for Ricky Rubio. He seems like a guy that's fine being a nothing on the offense. Whereas Jeff Teague, I feel like he fancies himself as an important player. So the 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 fit next to three guys who are clearly going to be getting more touches or are higher on the pecking order, um, and to bring Jeff Teague into that situation always seemed weird. I, I don't know. I would have probably just rolled with Rubio in that in that scenario. Especially for defensive purposes, man. Yeah, Rubio defends and he passes, but you know he's a worse spot up shooter. He's a way streakier shooter. Yeah. So I guess you just look at the the shooting, and that's why you like Jeff Teague more. But I don't know. He's never really done it for me. But yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I you know, you know how we call people playoff versions of themselves. I don't know that I'm looking forward to playoff Rubio. Maybe that's just me. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've never seen it. It's it's the debut. Yeah, yeah it might it might be I don't know that. It might unveiling. Be it might go ham. It might be something. Yeah, it might go ham. Something. Yeah, right. <laughs> Well, he always has those weird stretches of games where he hits a bunch of threes. That would be hilarious if timing just worked out perfectly so that he hits a bunch and then you can see Twitter freak out about playoff Rubio. I'm I'm all I'm all for that. I, I want to see that. I mean, you also have to factor in that a lot of people do not watch Utah Jazz games. You know, there's people that only watch the the cream of the crop sometimes. So a lot of people are going to get to see, you know, not only Rubio, but the entire team and see how you know, like they're going to either see Donovan Mitchell, they're going to see English, they're going to see uh, role system playing Crawford, um, and how good defensively Rudy Gobert is. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, them, 
Remember when people thought um, uh, Crowder couldn't shoot because he wasn't in the system? Then he got to a system and shot worse. Good times that was. <laughs> <laughs> Jazz, the Jazz could sneak up to the three seed because they play the the Blazers tomorrow night. And the Blazers have lost four straight. So I, I, I thought, I think Utah has been like probably the best team in the second half of the season once Gobert got back. So that would be, that'd be cool if they could get up to the three. I mean, they're like 27 and five in their last 32 games, which is fucking absurd. You know, even when, if you consider the composition of their team, like they have good players, but goddamn, like they're, they've been kicking people's asses lately. Yeah. So, you know, Kind of makes me wish they would have kept the band together somehow and Gordy didn't have to play in Boston with those people. <laughs> those, those people. people. <laughs> 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 the stain just rolled their head off and tongue it up. Great. Oh well, Gordy didn't play in Boston, so it's yeah. all good. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. Wait a couple minutes. Um, so, Luka Doncic, is, that, is it Don Cheech? Don Cheech. Oh, Don Cheech and okay. Chong. Okay, Don Cheech compared his game to Ben Simmons. But he has oh. a stroke, right? Like, he can he can shoot better than Ben. But he can right. shoot, and he doesn't quite shoot. have the hops. He shot more than one three-pointer since January 5th, I think. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not on the Don Cheech hive. Um, but I do see his name uh, being thrown around at the number two spot for the draft. Um, I know Zach's our, our Don Cheech specialist. Um, do you see any comparisons in him? I think, I think I can, I can understand a little bit because he's a six, eight point guard. Right. So like Simmons is what? Two inches taller. Like yeah. I get right. that. So basically from that he's Jalen Rose. He's Penny Hardaway. He's Magic yeah. Johnson. He's all those. He's all those guys, but better. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Not better, but <laughs> oh, uh, close my laptop. Jesus. <laughs> no, but he can play like he's a, he's a tall, big point guard. Yeah. Yeah, I, and, I, I don't, and he I don't can play off the ball too. This, this is the thing I want yeah. to understand. I don't think Don Cheech is going to be a flat out bum. I think that he's going to be good from from my knowledge of what I see on the eye test. Um, but immediately great, I don't know about that. And I see some people just no, he might be he might be like Bradley Beal, right? Which is still a really good player. But yeah, like, still, that's still that's might still be Bradley that's Beal. exceptional comparison. Like that's yeah. hey, Bradley Beal's first time All Star, um, always in the conversation as top five shooting guards in the league. Yeah, that's not bad, and, that, and that's a that's a good comparison. That's, that's like an okay, incredible hey, player. That's yeah, you know what I mean. Like that's yeah. hey, he's good. but I'm seeing LeBron. I'm no, seeing stop. No, stop. you're not. <laughs> Come on. Stop. Nobody's <laughs> not lying. Nobody's LeBron. That's like the calling that somebody the next to... Michael Jackson, the next Prince. That's impossible. But that's what that's they're ridiculous. doing, bro. People are calling that's him ridiculous. Larry Bird, and uh, yeah, that's too much. Listen, they're okay, getting... hey, that's fine. I'm fine with Larry Bird. Trey, Trey, Trey. Who <laughs> called him LeBron? Who called him the next LeBron? Nobody called him LeBron. Who man? did this? No way. Stephen A. It's <laughs> screaming A. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Like Zach said, Bradley Bill, perfect comparison. I mean, if he does end up number two or whoever gets number two and they have a starting point guard already, do they move him and slide him to a combo? Or to work? Yes, I, I, I yeah, so. I, play him at, I play him at the two. You play him at the two? You know, yeah. The crazy thing about this conversation is that I haven't seen any college player play more than like 40 minutes because all I watched was March Madness this year. And all these cats, like, <laughs> yeah, weren't and even every around. game that I watched of DeAndre Ayton like, or Marvin Bagley, they looked bad. So, <laughs> nah, yeah. Bagley looked good to me. Yeah, Bagley, Bagley actually did cool. And then I, it was, it was, it was kind of like spots. It was spots that, um, that shown Ayton, you know, like here and there, you know, where he was completely dominant. But then now and you the have kid, to back in. And the kid from Missouri lost the f- like first game, didn't he? Yeah, MPJ. And then he oh, came yeah. back. Took well, a, he only played like two or three games. Total. He had a spine injury, but he's still top ten. He shouldn't have come back at all. He he probably hurt his stock. God told him to come back, Mace. God. Told him. <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, wow. Yo, hold on. Is, that, is Zach still here? Zach is still here. Yeah, I'm still here. Oh, but we didn't get your opinion about playoff Rubio. Uh, I'm excited for it, man. Like he used to be a big time playoff guy 
in Europe at a young age. Mm-hmm. And so the fact that he finally gets to make the playoffs after all this time in, the, in his career, uh, he was supposed to make it his first year. He's supposed to make it as a rookie. They were the seven or eight seed, and then he blew out his knee trying to close out on Kobe, and they missed the playoffs that year. Like that, he was supposed to kind of change the culture the first year. So I'm excited for him. Like he's he's definitely earned it. He's gone through his his lumps on, in this career. Well, at least you're at least you're here for it. That's all that matters. Okay, um, KP Chris Depp, not not Pelton, uh, Chris Depp Porzingis. <laughs> Um, shouts to the machine. Shouts to the machine. Uh, says that Doncic is better than most of the. I mean, the college prospects that's out right now. That's coming in. That's coming into this year's draft. Agree or disagree? I agree. I think he's a top three prospect. I think he's probably, probably more two. skilled. Um, yeah, and he's also like he's played real basketball. He's played professional basketball for like the last four years. Yeah. Yeah, you can't discount that shit, man. Playing against grown men and not Prairie View A and M, like that shit matters, dude. Like actual professionals, good players on every single team, and the coaching. Because my lord, is the coaching awful in college basketball? Like I think a lot of that shit gets discounted. No, it's a much higher level than NCAA. Like I, I think if he ends up on a bad team that needs scoring I, I i think he's not going to be great right off the bat because no like true rookie is like really great except well i guess simmons and mitchell this year but um like i i can easily see him putting up like 18 to 20 points per game on, on a bad team in his first year like he he's he's polished as a scorer he, he's been playing against grown men um i i, I think he's got a, a really high floor compared to a lot of these other rookies I'll, I'll apologize if he actually comes out the gate averaging, you know, twenty. I'll, I'll, I'll give him his credit. But twenty is a lot for a rookie. I don't know, lot. like twenty is a, a lot. lot. Listen, I'm a I, huge hey, Dodgers guy. Listen, That's a yeah, lot. Yeah. I, I said if it was for a bad team, like if he's on the Suns, like I, I could see it. With Devin Booker. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. Devin Booker. Why Devin not? Booker's not passing to him. Listen, There's I no read that. <laughs> no. Good point. That's a good point. Devin Booker gonna tell him fuck out of here. Um, All right, let, let's say the Kings. Oh wait, they don't even have their pick, do they? Please don't send them to the Kings. No, the Kings have their pick. Oh yeah, they do. Right, right. right. That's uh, next, next year, year that they they give. Yeah, them. next year. Don't. I mean, if we get him on the Bulls, hey, I'll take him. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna have to eat all my words if he comes to the Bulls. Um, but I'd rather see Trey Young um, with the uh, Devin Booker so they can be the Splash Babies. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> yeah, no one's getting the ball. In it. <laughs> yeah, no one. Just go rebound and get out the way. Um, moving right along, um, is it Andre Ingram that was called up from the G League? Yeah. Or after ten years, um, great, great thing, great uh, gesture by the Lakers. I hope Disney makes a movie about him, man. I thought it. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I didn't know that he shot fifty five percent from the three. It's just, we're <laughs> just pretty wild, dude. Um, but yeah, isn't also, he like the? He's like the career leader in three yeah, he's pointers. Career leader in, uh, in the G League. The G League, but also um, thirty two, older than most of us. So yeah, I don't he know. definitely has been stressing, dude. He's got yeah, the. Want, he's got the grades say, coming in. I wanted to say Jeanette. No, no, he has it all full head. Uh, Mace. Of course he's stressed. He's been making $15,000 a year for the last 10 years. <laughs> That's what I was going to say. Like to hold on to that dream, man, instead of going out to Europe or somewhere, or China or Russia or wherever. And just to, just to like, you might be able to make it to the NBA. That thing, mm, man. Yeah, I don't know that I would have did that. I would have been fucking quit. So, he, you know, shout outs to him and, and what he's given to, uh, you know, the development league. Um, I think it's a cool gesture by the Lakers. He actually was a teammate with Luke Walton too during Luke's rookie stint when he was getting sent up and down. Um and now he's playing for Luke Walton for the next two games. That's pretty classy of the Lakers. Um I know his paycheck's gonna be pretty big compared to what he's been receiving throughout the season. Um but I hope he gets some time. You know, I think that's pretty cool. Like the movie Rudy, but he's likable. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. 
Zach, you fool. <laughs> 16 rebounds. Which player needs 16 rebounds for triple double? Uh, we already know, man. On, it's Trey. I, I, I'm kind of. Trey. Was. Oh, was. Call? Was. He should be MVP oh. again. Yo, stop. <laughs> stop stop <her>. that. <laughs> but only if he gets 16 rebounds. I think yesterday. you guys are out of your minds if you think Russ is not going to get these rebounds. He's, he is Definitely 100% going to grab 16 rebounds. And he's going to, he might even get 18 tomorrow. Like he is, because Steven Adams is in on the joke too. That's why it's going to happen. And you know, Stephen Adams like whatever. I've got my beautiful um hundred million dollar contract. I'm locked in for years now. My value around here cannot even be questioned. Um, I don't need the actual rebounding stacks like the tally. Like my our rebounding like the rebounding percentage while I'm on the floor still shows that I'm one of the best rebounders in the history of life, motherfuckers. So let's let my man get this record. Like this is, Stephen this is Adams being invested in this shit is why it's going to happen. Yeah, yesterday against Miami, uh, Russ had 18 boards. Steven Adams had three. <laughs> it's, it's like, come on, man. It's like, it's happening. On, it's, it's fucking happening. Awesome. It's ridiculous. Wait, I, I got a it's question. Crazy. Are they are they at home tomorrow? Uh, let's see. I hope not. I hope they not. are at home against Memphis. Yeah, Las you're going to see some real Las fuckery because, because what happens a lot, and this is at home, is Steven Adams will control tip the rebound, which is li- was is supposed to give him the board, but <laughs> Russ will grab it, and then all of a sudden Russ gets the board. So this ha- it's, this is a lock. He's getting twenty two rebounds tomorrow. Oh man, okay, CEO, like the culture around there is just kills me, man. It really, 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 really kills me. But hey, man, like you know, it's funny. But the thing that I think Russ realizes that you know a lot of people don't is that in 15 years nobody's going to talk about this shit the the fucking blatant stat padding like people are just going to be like this is a guy who averaged a triple double two seasons in a row yeah. you know like he knows he knows he's in tune with how they're going to how the conversation is going to be framed so i get why he's doing it man and like you know when he's retired he could completely just own this Mr. Triple Double shit. Like, he could ride this stick into oblivion. So, like, wait, do you have you know. Russ becoming Mr. Three Thousand? That movie with yes, uh, with yes. Mac? yes, yes, that's crazy. Yes, yes, Bernie Mac. Yes, you're right. Though. Yes, that's that'll be. I think that'll be part of Pelton's greatest players formula. Shout out, hey Kevin, what's up, buddy? You know, I miss you, Kevin. The triple doubles, and it won't matter how they were happened. Right, because think about like the Oscar Robertson thing, right? Like they played like twenty five more possessions a game, and he did. No one really brings that up. They don't care. Nobody, he, he averaged triple double. <laughs> nobody cares, man. And Russ, nobody's gonna bring up that Russell Westbrook had the perfect teammate. Like, you know, this isn't a guy on a contract year, or this isn't a guy who. And by the way, Stephen Adams isn't even like a rebound. Hound, like he's just really fucking good at boxing out and making space and making sure the team secures it. So he's got the perfect team for the teammate for this shit too. Nobody's gonna remember that though. They're gonna be like, this guy could do it all. He could get assists. He could score thirty. He could get ten rebounds. Hey, that least, guy was there. At least he's not ducking rebounds like Al Horford, pretending to be scared of the rebounds. <laughs> I don't do that. To big I, I thought Al. that was real. I thought that was real corny. Wait. <laughs> What you mean? You never heard the story about how the rebound comes off the off the rim and then he like ducks like as if the ball's going to hit him. Well, why would he do that? He just says this, he finds humor in it. Like he just he, he messes oh, with the guys on the bench and lets somebody else rebound. He'll just like duck <laughs> and pretend that the ball's going to hit him. Al Horford is the anti Westbrook and deliberately depresses his rebound stats. Yes, because he doesn't. Yes. Uh, guys, 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 guys. J, J, J. Uh, did you want to talk about Daryl Morey's musical? I was just looking to see if you could get tickets to it on SeatGeek, but it does not appear that that is 
an option. Where is it actually uh, playing? In Houston at the the Match Theater, Houston, Texas. So all the all the Houstonians, man, go check out that play, or or don't, you know, take your girl out and do something nice. Flip uh, City. Oh, I see. I see what you were drawing from here. This Shea Serrano article. I actually heard some music from it. Hey, hey I don't know. It's it's weird. <laughs> it, I don't know. I mean, generally- my dad. My dad does a lot of community theater, and I was just thinking about him if he told me that he was doing a musical produced by like Joe Lacob, and I'd be like, uh, I don't know about that. I don't so. mind the concept. Yo. I want good music. I mean, that's why I would go to a musical is for good music. Now, I have only heard a snippet. Something that was released uh, on uh, the internet. I haven't heard the whole thing. Sixers Bucks first round is kind of a cool matchup. Yeah, like Simmons, that. Simmons, I Giannis. Don't see, I don't want to see Cavs Bucks. Please. Cleveland's got a tank out of that uh, Bucks first round matchup. Really? Like well, Cleveland's yeah, got so. the Pacers. You know it's gonna be was. more work for them. You know it was. You it's gonna be more the work Bucks. For them. It's more work. <laughs> Yeah. It's way more work than Victor Oladipo and his buddies. Like it just yeah. is. It's just like it's just it's just a fact. I'm sorry. No disrespect to Indiana. You know it's pretty dope what they've been able to do this year. I was convinced they were destined for the lottery, but you know, um. So you know, congratulations to them on a dope season. But much rather play the fucking Pacers than the Bucks. Sorry, I'm I am just looking a- at. The- <laughs> I am a little disappointed. It doesn't look like we'll get Bucks Raptors until uh, Eastern Finals. So the the Zach Waz debate. If the Raptors the make it, if the Raptors, <laughs> Raptors make it, take, the Raptors are going to take Cleveland down in round two without question. Man, they're going to have so much trouble with the Wizards. Jesus Christ, man! <laughs> I feel sorry for their fans, dude. It's just stressful. Like if they got Miami. That's kind of just like whatever. They'll beat Miami, I think, no problem. But Washington is going to give them trouble, dude. <laughs> are the Are the Celtics going to get out of the first round? Is Brad Stevens going to coach his way out of the first round? Uh, they don't have to. I, I like. like I, don't know why I feel like Miami have or Washington is a tough matchup for them. I, I don't know why people think uh, Jason Tatum is going to carry the day here. All right, so or here, here, here we are on, on the matchup so far in the East, right? If the playoffs was to start tomorrow, Toronto versus Washington, who are you guys taking? Toronto and Toronto, Toronto, right? Toronto. Raptors in five. Okay. Boston versus Miami, who are we taking? I think I'm taking Miami Boston. Freaking barely. I mean, uh, excuse me, Boston, but barely. Boston, but barely. I want to Miami. 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 Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to go Boston. Barely. Philly, Milwaukee. Philly. I don't know. I think it depends on Embiid. I think I'm probably taking I'm going Milwaukee. I want to see playoff Giannis, dog. I want to see him go. I want to see him go deeper than than where first round. I don't want to see him smack. Milwaukee basically walk. The winner of this series is basically going to walk into the conference finals against. Yeah. Yeah. All right, and then Cleveland, Indiana. We have a a sweep on Cleveland. Uh, yeah, Cleveland, definitely. Okay, Cleveland is I, not sweeping anybody because they don't. That's not what Cleveland does. <laughs> I, I, I think I think the Pacers take two in that series. Yeah, yeah. easily. Right. Out west, Houston versus play in Minnesota or Denver. Houston, 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 Houston will set the record for margin of victory in a four game sweep. Okay. I hope they play Denver so that the scores are like one fifty to one thirty five. All right, we have a three-way tie uh, between New Orleans, San Antonio, and Oklahoma City that will play the Warriors. God, I hope it's OKC, man. Oh, I man. really want totally. to OKC. Oh, God, yes. I need That'd that. Perfect. I need it. So, wait, so what do we need to have uh, – what do we need for the Thunder to play the Warriors? Them to lose. They would have to lose to the Grizzlies. I think they're at the bottom of the tiebreakers right now. So as long as they lose. They're gonna, yeah. Russ, they're gonna Russ try- grab 18 but, but, boards, guys. they drop it. With Russ chasing those rebounds, they'll be out of their game plan. Maybe it's yeah, possible. As if, as if they ever have a game plan, please. That is, yeah, that is their game plan. Russ, get the board. All right, Portland again. Portland versus New Orleans, San Antonio, or Oklahoma City. I mean, they've been slipping a little bit, but probably got to go with Portland. 
Okay. Portland but, is beating San Antonio, fam. Um, Portland, Portland could flip to the four too. I, I think the Jazz are gonna win tomorrow night. So the West is chalk. Yeah. So the top four are locked, and then um, five, six, and seven are, are interchangeable. But the thing is, three five. to eight is like, is it even chalk? <laughs> like yeah, when the three just, seed yeah, beats yeah. the six seed, they're literally two five, games apart. Six, so. Right. You know what I'm saying? Is there any team that gives uh, outside of, you know, for fan base wise, obviously we want to see the Thunder versus the, the Warriors. Is there any other team that causes a problem towards the Warriors? Until Steph gets back? I, I think he's Golden State, man. I mean, excuse me, um, the Thunder. I think if they're like when if they're actually committed to playing as hard as they can for forty eight minutes, which they obviously haven't consistently been doing this whole season, like they bust the Warriors' ass a few times already this year, right? Like because yeah, you know because you know Russ because you know Russ has the thing with Steph where you know it's it's awkward, but I'm just saying like when they when they're super locked in, I think they could give this team a run for their money and especially. <laughs> A team that's shorthanded. Even if the, like the 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 Warriors are probably still overall more talented, better coached, you know, a more cohesive unit, even without Steph, um, than the Thunder are. But I think it's a lot more interesting, you know. And Kawhi is one hundred percent not coming back, right? So nah, Spurs aren't no a chance. threat. Yeah, he's out. He, he flipped. He flipped them the bird, obviously. I had to not. I hate. I hate that I was wrong about that, man. Damn, I didn't. Think, <laughs> I didn't think Kawhi would do us like that. No, 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 no. This is the. It wasn't just you, though, Trey. Like I remember the first freaking report was um Michael Wright of ESPN. He was like, "Look, you know, <laughs> Kawhi's camp has expressed some frustration." Blah 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 blah. And it was news because nobody had ever heard anybody go against the Spurs. Like, anybody of significance go against the Spurs, whether it be Timmy, Manu, Tony Parker, uh, and Kawhi now. We heard LMA over the summer bitching about wanting to be traded, not liking his role, whatever. But they was just like, look, you're not going anywhere. You're under contract. We can't get fair value for you. Shut the fuck up and show up the camp. Um, but even when, as Michael Wright was reporting it, he was like, yo, I think Kawhi's going to be back in like a week or two. So the very first report was just like, look, man, like, you know, there's some there's some tension there, but ultimately we think this should work itself out. Kawhi and the Spurs would be fine. And then, too, like this shit is carried on the whole season and he's not back. It's not so it's not like you were so freaking wrong. Like everybody got that shit wrong. Yeah. Well, I mean He'll be back next year. Be back. <laughs> you, you know what? You know that's the craziest part about it. That if he just sticks around, he just decides to come back and just you know. So can set. you guys ex- explain to me Kawhi's contract situation this summer? What's he? Uh, is he eligible for an extension? He's What's up the for the super max, so he can get like two seventeen or something like that for five I'm years. Saying, so so what is his current deal? He has two years or one year left after this uh, season. He, he has one year left. He's a free agent in twenty nineteen. Yeah. Okay. Damn. Woo. He's got a, he's got a player mercy. option for 2019 that he's definitely not taking. Not yeah. taking. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> Shouts to Nate Duncan, man. Um, Jared Dubin yesterday pointed out whenever Nate brings up a guy who has a player option that he's definitely gonna take, he derisively says he's probably gonna pick up that option. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Like Melo taking Right, Mello's exactly. Mill, bro. Like Car- Carmelo Anthony is just like he- he's definitely picking up that option. Um, damn, this summer's gonna be fun with the Spurs. First fun Spurs summer ever in my life. Are you guys excited? San Antonio Knights.
drive. It's great. Where are you driving to, Zach? I'm going to Phoenix, going to FanRag Sports Headquarters. That's wow. where Doing yeah. some videos. Doing some videos, doing some meets. Doing what, now, what yeah. type of videos are we talking about? Shaking here? hands. Make sure you go to Pig and Pickle for food. Pig and Pickle? Pig and Pickle. All right. Make we'll sure you down. go to that pizza place that Amin knows the guy and Ethan said is the best pizza in America. Probably Make Paulo's. Sure it up. Oh, Paulo's shout out probably. to Dad Ethan, by the way. Yeah, shout out yes. to Yes. Rest in peace. Oh, he's, working, Instagram he's working that Instagram. <laughs> he is working that Instagram. <laughs> oh, man, he, he is. those he's likes got... coming in. He knows what he's doing. He's, he's, All right, he's, 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 Hey, hold on, hold on, Jade. More yeah. importantly, shouts to Ali, man, for, you know, being Ethan's wife and bearing a child and yeah, doing a bang-up job. There you go. What's the name of Ethan's dog? I forget. Shit. Otis? It's like some, some typical, It's like Max or Oscar? something. Some typical dog. White people name. I feel bad. What was the name? Of, what was the name of the? What was the name of the dog walker? That's the more important question. Dog just got pushed aside <laughs> in the Instagram world. See ya. Yeah, is this a <laughs> fuck out of here? Uh, Otto. It's Otto. 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 Oh, Otto was some Oscar. typical dog name. <laughs> Oscar works. <laughs> um. Anyway, if you're playing draft, go play Trey. Trey, what's the uh, Twitter handle? Uh, the Twitter handle is Play Black Trey. P L A Y B L K. I mean, yeah, B L K T R A Y. There will be some secret games there on the timeline. How did you do last night? Uh, won twenty seven dollars. Damn. Damn, I got smoked. Smoked again, guys. I'm locked out, guys. I'm locked out of my old draft account because my phone had got reset and drafted, and I don't remember the password. So. Um, I'm in the process of uh, figuring that out. <laughs> um, Just so y'all know. If all the people who have been challenging me to games, I'm not ducking you. I'm locked out of my account. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Zach, you got a show planned for tomorrow? Yes. Uh, Jason Concepcion. Of the Ooh. Ringer Network. Wow. That's Stu God's yeah. episode went through the roof. Favorite. Yeah, of course it did. And what about uh, Angie Treasure? Oh, we got a good snark hoops for tomorrow night. Good snark hoops. Nice. Already uh, already locked in. Recording them both, editing them both. They're good. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for doing that. Uh, Maze, thank you. Thank you, Jade. Uh, see you on Friday. Yes, sir. And uh, thank you, Waz. Thank you, Trey. Safe travels, Zach. Yo, hold on. What? Before y'all go, make sure you guys are subscribing to the freaking score. Uninterrupted's the score. Make sure you subscribe and rate. We need all the listeners we can get, guys. We got plenty of amazing football guests lined up for you if you're interested in this. <laughs> so, those, so check us out. The score comes out every Friday a.m. I'm taking it. Every Friday, every Friday in the morning around 9 o'clock. Um, Pacific Standard Time. Uh, it's on and it's on Spotify. Who's the football well. guest this week? Who's the football <laughs> guest this week? The unknown football some, guest. Some, a guy named Dwayne Brown, I believe. He's a Kendrick Lamar fan or something. I don't remember. So wait, on these shows, is your first question was, "Who are you?" <laughs> so he doesn't look, even I'm, ask. If I'm being honest, this. and when I get Blind. the email about our show rundown, my first response is, "I've never heard of this guy." <laughs> I don't watch the NFL like that. It's not like a shot at them. I'm not a right. I'm not a like a real close NFL watcher. And plus, like this show is about talking to them about their mu- musical and cultural taste anyway. So, you know, we don't get into X and O's. Although, yo, you guys would be so proud of me for this shit. Um We had what's his name? Eric Kendricks on. He's a linebacker for the Vikings. Vikings, ah, there you go. Look at you, Maze. Fucking he has a ball. twin, right? He has no. He has an older brother who okay, did a like, video with Rihanna or some shit yeah. like that. Michael yeah. Um, so, yes, there you go. So he's on the show. Um, we get the show notes talking about like different artists that he's into, and one of the artists that he's into is um XXX Tentacion, the kid out of the, um uh Fort Lauderdale, Broward County, whatever. Um, who you know, he's been in the news in the past for allegedly beating up his pregnant ex-girlfriend, right? 
Um, and right, like right the weekend before that, like court papers came out that rapper Fabulous, the mother of his child, uh, alleged that he punched her front teeth out in a domestic violence um instance or whatever. And so like rappers behaving badly with women and doing terrible things were in the news. But again, like all my show notes said that this guy's a fan of XXX Tentacion. So I'm like, okay, so I, I, I'm I saying all of this shit. And I notice he's like looking at me weird because I'm asking him, I basically was like, yo, you're a fan of this dude. How do you balance being a fan with the bad, bad behavior that they do? That's basically the question I was getting. But like his face, his whole face and demeanor changed. And then of course, like my producer comes out afterwards and is like, I know that the NFL basically hands down a directive that y'all can't even utter the words domestic violence. Like, I wasn't asking him the question because he's an NFL player and NFL players are known for whooping women's asses. Like, that's not, that wasn't really my thought process, but I guess that's what he thought was kind of happening. So we cut the segment from the show. But yeah, I wish you guys could have saw that guy's face when I was like, (laughs) So, so he's just like, is this guy really asking me to answer questions about domestic violence? I'm like, I mean, you're a human being, aren't you? But then, you know, the Great. fucking NFL, man. He didn't Wait. do his research on you either, Waz. He, did, he <laughs> well, didn't know you're Mr. Me Too. That's what I'm saying. I know. Yo. But it's just like what was the, way, his face like? the way that he felt. <laughs> too, he, he was kind of just looking like he was trying to keep like a smile. Because he was a, like, he's a gregarious, happy, fun dude. Yeah. Right. So he was trying to keep a smile, but also looking at me confused like, are you serious right now, motherfucker? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, That's hilarious. Oh, my God. But, like, again, like, I wasn't making the NFL players and domestic violence connection. I was making the rappers and domestic violence connection. But, you know, it's just the NFL fucking annoys me, man. The way they, the way they force these guys to act out in public like they're robots and not human beings, you know, with fully formed personalities and thoughts and shit. Like, it's just it's fucking annoying, man. Anyway, fuck that. NFL. Um, Jesus. <laughs> so, and on Friday, I'm cutting next that guest out. from I'm, the NFL. I'm cutting that out. That I'm cutting out. By the way, how do I find the video, man? Walk me through this. How do I find this? Dude, I just have to send you a direct link because Spotify is a mess. Like half the people on their phone, they can search it. Just put type in spotlight, type in uninterrupted in your search bar on your phone. Don't do it from the app that you might have on your laptop or whatever. You have to do it from your phone because Spotify is is invested in making this a mobile situation for whatever reason. So you, you can't watch it on your laptop or computer even if you have the Spotify app. So you should type in um, spotlight in the search bar, spotlight uninterrupted and the score should should pop up but like you know these people are based in sweden and they they has they haven't been the best partners if i'm being completely honest with you guys by the way anybody else you but, want to throw under the oh, bus it, it, you know, i mean i just threw myself under the bus for being an idiot but uh oh spot i mean you know shouts to spotify yeah they're completely aloof and don't know what the fuck is going on but shouts to them did you see they uh you know they recently had a ipo Right. They went, yeah, they went, saw- they went public. So basically, they uh, you know they used you to get their IPO up, and then they're like, "Hey, forget about it." You know? Is that what they did? <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> you know, and no, by, by the way, I, I appreciate the uh, alien video you sent me yesterday too. Thank you for that. Of course, I'm always thinking about my people, man. Thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen.